Hi guys, today we are going to see an interesting topic, gastrointestinal agent. The name itself implies gastro means stomach. The ailments or the disorders which occur in stomach and intestine are the agents which are used to treat all these disorders is called gastrointestinal agents. Before stepping deep into this, let me ask some few questions. It's not about the previous lecture we had, but about the last meal you had. Yes, what do you have? Oh, chapati with chenna. Yeah, that's good. It's a protein diet. Sandwich. That's a snack, man. Better you have four to five sandwich, right? What about you? Oh, you had biryani. Yeah, yummy, hot and spicy. Chicken or meat? Meat. Yeah, good protein diet. So after your meal, how do you feel now? Do you feel your stomach is expanding into it? Or if you are feeling still more hungry. Okay, whatever it might be. First, we have your a look of video of the system involved in digestion. Yeah, here we go. We derive energy from all the food we consume. This energy is obtained from our digestive system by the process of digestion. The process of digestion begins when we put a mass of the food in our mouth. Teeth is used to cut, break food. Saliva helps to soften the food and contains the enzyme that aids digestion. The softened food is rolled into a bolus, pushed by tongue into the throat. Movement of the food occurs due to a wave-like contraction known as peristalsis. A sphincter known as the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes and the food enters the stomach. The hydrochloric acid present in the stomach converts the food into chyme. The chyme enters a part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. The bile helps in breaking down fats and the pancreatic juice breaks down other food particles. Most of the nutrients from the food are absorbed in a part of the small intestine known as the jejunum. The food particles are further broken down into the jejunum. The larger food particles that cannot be absorbed move through the ileocecal value and enters the large intestine or colon. The colon absorbs water, manufactures minerals and produces mucus. This food is considered as waste formed into fecus. The waste or the fecus moves into the last part of the large intestine known as the rectum. So how was the video? Hope you learned a lot of the, about the system involved in digestion, right? So the digestion starts from your mouth, it goes to stomach, there also digestion occurs, and then intestine, where a part of the digestion also occurs, and absorption of minerals, vitamins, everything occurs. Then it goes to large intestine, finally it is excreted in the rectum. So to have a constant, smooth and enjoy your ride, you should follow a few traffic rules. It? And what are the traffic rules? Only few. Eat your meals with regular intervals. Drink a lot of water, probably 2.5 liters to 3 liters per day, depending upon your weight. And uh, have some uh, minimum exercise to stay fit. And if you are on drug or medication, use uh, as per your doctor advice. That's all. There's no, there's no traffic jam. Unless otherwise, if there is a confusion in the traffic, you need a traffic assistant, right? That comes a gastrointestinal agent to regulate all the traffic. I mean, the traffic involved in your system, involved in your digestive system, right? So these agents help your gastrointestinal tract to work properly. And we'll have a look over it. Now we'll move on to the slides. Dysfunction of any of the above organs leads to various disorders or conditions that include achlorhydria, decrease in the acid secretion or absence of acid secretion, hyperchlorhydria, excessive secretion of acid which further leads to the formation of ulcers, accumulation of various toxins or gases, diarrhea is the improper absorption of fluids into the bloodstream leads to the condition called diarrhea. Constipation is the insufficient peristaltic movement in the large intestine or excessive absorption of fluids leads to a condition called constipation. The agents that are used to treat the above mentioned conditions are usually termed as gastrointestinal agents. Based on the source, they are classified into organic agents. They act at receptor level. Inorganic agents, they act locally. We are going to concentrate on the inorganic agents. 
Acidifying agents is the agents that are used to treat hyperchlorhydria or achlorhydria. Antacids are the agents that are used to treat hyperacidity. Catharitics are the agents that are used to treat constipation and to increase the peristaltic movements. Adsorptions are the agents used to adsorb gases or toxins and excess fluids of the intestine. Protectants are the agents that are used to treat ulcer. These inorganic agents are used only for temporary relief and they are not recommended for long term therapy as they may cause other side effects. Acidifying agents. These are agents that increase the acidity of the gastrointestinal tract so as to aid the digestion of food. Acidifying agents depending on the use are classified as gastric acidifiers. The drugs used to treat achlorhydria or hypochlorhydria conditions. Urinary acidifiers. The drugs used to treat some types of urinary tract infections. Systemic acidifiers. Drugs used to treat systemic alkosis. Gastric acidifiers, we can say the example is dilute hydrochloric acid. Synonym is the muriatic acid. Antacids are alkaline substances that are used to neutralize the excess acid released in the stomach, causing pain and ulcers. Excess release of acid occurs in various gastrointestinal disorders that include gastritis, various types of ulcers and gastroesophageal reflex disorder. Antacids also act by inactivating the stomach enzyme pepsin. Antacids are classified into systemic antacids and non-systemic antacids. Systemic antacids are soluble and readily absorbed by the GIT. They cause electrolyte imbalance and alkalosis. Example, sodium containing antacids. Sodium containing antacids are contraindicated in people with hypertension as they may cause edema. Non-systemic antacids are insoluble and are not readily absorbed by the GIT. Example, calcium, magnesium and aluminium containing antacids. Calcium and aluminium containing antacids cause constipation. Magnesium containing antacids produce laxative effect. Laxatives are usually termed as saline catharetics. They are used to treat constipation. Constipation is associated with various disorders of the liver by improper food habits etc. Constipation under normal condition can be overcome by the consumption of fibrous food. Catharetics are easily available as the over-the-counter drugs. Catharetics are classified into four subclasses. Stimulants. These act by local irritation and by increasing the peristaltic movement. Bulk forming. These agents swell in the intestine and increase the bulk which stimulates peristaltic movements. Emollient. These provide lubricant effect for easy passage through rectum. They are termed as stool softness. Saline catharetics. They increase the osmotic load of the GIT. These agents relieve hypertoxicity by increasing the fluid content in the GIT. These saline catharetics are highly water soluble and consumed with large amounts of water. Official saline catharetics include sodium containing agents for example sodium biphosphate, sodium phosphate, magnesium containing products like magnesium hydroxide, magnesium citrate, magnesium sulphate. Protectives and adsorbents. Protectives. Protectives are chemically inert substances that are used in the treatment of intestinal inflammation. These are mainly used in the treatment of intestinal ulcer. They form a protective coat over the mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract, thus preventing the exposure of ulcers to hydrochloric acid. Adsorbents are chemically inert, finely powdered substances that are used in the treatment of intestinal inflammation or to adsorb toxins, viruses and bacteria that causes diarrhea. These are mainly used in the treatment of diarrhea. It acts by surface phenomenon. It adsorbs on the wall of the gastrointestinal tract and then binds to the causative bacteria or toxin which is then eliminated through the stool. The examples include bismuth subnitrate, milk of bismuth, bismuth subcarbonate, bismuth subgallate, kaolin and activated charcoal. Okay guys, now we will summarize about today's topic, gastrointestinal agent. Don't get panic about all those stuff, disorders which occur in your stomach and intestine. Every problem has a solution, like that every disease has some medicines, drugs, agents, etc. Follow these simple rules. Eat healthy food, have a balanced diet, drink plenty of water based on your weight, and have a positive thought. Do some exercise, like aerobics, zumba, or yoga. 
and uh, always have some conversation with your family members during the dinner time. Eat little or less. That's all. Today's lecture is over and we will have an, another interesting lecture later. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you.